Hello everyone. This is topic 5, 6, and 7 for exam 4. You put them all in one note packet. Um, probably going to take a couple parts here, but the first topic 5 is P-series. Um, so if you recall the integral test last time we had shown that the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of 1 over n squared converged and then we also showed that the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of 1 over n diverged. It turns out that that point where um, the power on n that's in the denominator is 1 is essentially the breaking point for convergence or divergence of this type of special series. Now, again, um, you know, don't make these harder than they are because, um, for example, well, I mentioned what that the integral test here leads us to the p-series, and a p-series takes this form. It's always 1 over n to the p. Um, for 1 over n, it would just simply be if you plugged in the type of, or if you plugged in the terms of this series, n is 1, you get 1 over 1 or 1, n is 2, 1 half, n is 3, 1 third, n is 4, 1 fourth, and so on. That's a special type of series, we give it a special name, the harmonic series. But don't um, make this harder than it is. I mean, if you wanted to write out the terms, I mean, we're trying to form theory where we don't need to write out the terms, but just to show you, 1 over n squared would be 1 plus 1 over 2 squared is 1 fourth, plus 1 over 3 squared is 1 ninth, plus 1 over 4 squared is 1 sixteenth, and so on. So by divergence, what we're saying for this series, 1 over n, is that if you add all these terms up infinitely, the sum is going to continue to grow without bound, and it will basically approach infinity. Whereas where we said this converged, the 1 over n squared, means that if you add these terms up infinitely, that the sum is never going to exceed a specific number. Now, we don't know at this point what that number is, but we know that it does converge. Okay, So the theorem for the p-series is such that if you have a series 1 over n to the p power, where p is a positive integer, um, that it simply converges, because we mentioned that in this definition, that p is a positive constant, um, that it simply converges if p is greater than 1, and it diverges if p is less than or equal to 1. So they're very simple test because all you have to do, just look for it. Look for 1 over n to some power, and then recognize it as being a p-series. It's going to be extremely important as we progress. And so this example, immediately you recognize it as a p-series, 1 over n to the p-power, p is equal to 2. And then by the theorem, since p is greater than 1, then it converges. I mean, we already knew that by the um, integral test for specifically for p equaling 2. But any number greater than 1, p is 3, p is 4, p is 5, they're all going to converge. Um, so for this one, maybe to see the value of p, and we use p for power. To see the value of p here, you have to rewrite it. So make sure you know your rules for radicals off to the side. Recall the nth root of, here, let me do it this way. Instead of saying the nth root, because I don't want to get confused with the ends we're talking about. Let me say the bth root of x to the a power is x to the a over b. Right, it's power over root. I always remember that. So in this case, n to the two-thirds. And then you recognize it as a p-series, where p is two-thirds, and that is less than or equal to 1, so then it diverges. So that's all there is to the concept of a p-series. 
But B-series become very important in our comparison tests. And that's the next topic. Topic 6 and 7 are two comparison tests. Um, topic 6 is referred to as the direct comparison test. And then we'll see topic 7 later that's called the limit comparison test. But with the direct comparison test, as the name suggests, we're going to compare a given series with a simple series whose convergence or divergence is known. Now, we have two very simple series that we've been introduced to. Um, they are now the P-series, and if you recall, the geometric series. So those are going to become very important with respect to our comparison tests. First off, the theorem. If we let some of the A sub n be the given series, and some of the B sub n be the series we are comparing to, or you can call it the comparison series, and we're stating that all the terms have to be positive, Notice the distinction here between when I say the sum of the a sub n, we're talking about the sum of the series, or the sum of the b sub n, we're talking about the sum of that series. But when we just say a sub n is greater than 0, we mean the terms of the series are positive or greater than 0. So all the terms, a sub n and b sub n, are greater than 0 for all values of n. Okay, so then if we could show that the terms of a sub n are less than or equal to the terms of b sub n for all values of n, and we know that b sub n converges, then the sum of the a sub n will also converge. Now that should make intuitive sense. Um, you know, at this point you're probably reading that and you're not really thinking of what is happening, but what we're saying is that if this sum of the b sub n converges, it converges to some number. Let's say it converges to, I don't know, 5, whatever. It doesn't matter. But if the conditions are such that all the terms in the series a sub n are less than or equal to the terms of all the, all the terms in the series b sub n, and the sum of the b sub n is, let's say, 5, then the biggest the sum of the a sub n can get would be 5 as well. So this sum of the a sub n would have to converge because it would have to be less than or equal to 5. So it does make intuitive sense. And similarly here, if a sub n is greater than or equal to b sub n for all n, and the sum of the b sub n diverges, so if it diverges, it basically means the sum is infinite. Um, then they're saying that the sum of the a sub n diverges. Well, if the sum of the b sub n is, in, is infinite and the terms in a sub n are bigger than, greater than or equal to, the terms in b sub n, then the sum of the a sub n should be bigger than this infinity. So let me say uh, greater than or equal to infinity, which would be a contradiction because you can't get greater than infinity. But it would diverge is the whole point there, okay? Uh, basically, I summarize this here with a couple of remarks. It's saying if a larger series converges, that would be like the sum of the b sub n. See, it's bigger than the a sub n. A larger series converges, then the smaller series must also converge. That's a sub n, smaller series. Or if a smaller series diverges... Okay, the smaller series being b sub n, because b sub n is less than a sub n, then the larger series must also diverge, and that's the a sub n, because a sub n is greater than b sub n. Now, as I had mentioned, um, two types of series that we'll typically be uh, comparing to are the p series or the geometric series. So make sure, you know, these are just quick examples of what they look like. But a P-series, again, anything 1 over n to the P, pick a power, any power, doesn't matter. I'll say 5, for example. And then the geometric series, recall, there's one of two forms. Either, let's say, the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of, I'm just going to pick some numbers just to illustrate, 3 times 2 fifths to the n minus 1th. 
Okay, so A and R represent real numbers. There's A, the value is 3. Here's R, the value is 2 fifths. And similarly here, something of this form. Just make sure that the index matches the power, the appropriate power on R. If you're starting at 1, the power on R should be n minus 1. Or like in this form, if it starts at 0, um, maybe it's 7 and 3 four, times 3 fourths to the nth. But again, just real number raised to a variable power. That's kind of a, a difference between these two. Geometric is always a real number, typically a fraction, raised to a variable power, whereas P is always 1 over, and then it's the opposite of that. A variable base and a real number power. Okay, so be able to identify a P series and a geometric series. That's extremely important <coughs> as we look at our examples. So the next page of notes says use the direct comparison test to determine convergence or divergence. And Here we are given the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of 1 over n squared plus 1. We say that that's going to be the given series, the sum of the a sub n. So you always start out this way, and then you're going to compare it to what we're going to call the sum of the b sub n. And that'll be the sum in this case. Remember, it's either going to be a p-series or a geometric series. And if we took away that little plus 1 that's in the denominator, and we just look at 1 over n squared, that is a p-series. So that's going to be our comparison series. 1 over n squared. Okay, the next step, and now I want to bring this, um, your attention to our little table here. Um, in the table... We've got a comparison cluster. The first two, letter I and letter II, those are the direct comparison. So those represent the direct comparison test. And letter III here is the limit comparison test. So you might want to make a distinction on your cheat sheet here, because remember, you could bring this in to the final exam with you. And so you might want to make a distinction um, that the first two under the comparison cluster are direct, while the third is the limit. And notice that it says the same thing as our theorem. And the key is this term-by-term -term comparison here. Is a sub n greater than or equal to b sub n? That's what we have, or is it less than or equal to b sub n? That's what dictates which of these two cases we are going to use. And so, at this point, once you decide the comparison series, and it's often as it says in the comment section, geometric or P, we'll worry about the last sentence when we get to limit comparison, but it's often geometric or P, and it's usually just a situation where you knock out one little term, and you've got a good comparison to identical P series or geometric. Here's the structure of the solution I want you to follow at this point. We have to establish the term-by-term -term comparison between a sub n and b sub n. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to write down a sub n, I'm going to leave a space for the inequality, and write down b sub n, and then literally write down their nth terms underneath. So 1 over n squared plus 1 for a sub n, and 1 over n squared for b sub n. Now at this point, we have to decide which way the inequality points. And it's a theorem from, pre, uh, from algebra regarding inequalities. I'm going off to a separate sheet of paper here to mention this theorem to you. Um, it's a theorem regarding the reciprocals and inequalities. Let's say that I, I asked you, you know, what inequality symbol goes between 3 and 5? And obviously, you're going to say less than, right? And then I say, okay, take reciprocals. Now, what? which way does the inequality point? Well, 1 third is 0 0.33, 1 
point, etc. And point one fifth is point two, so point three three is greater than. So what I'm suggesting here is the fact that when you're talking about reciprocals, you reverse the sense of the inequality. So the argument can be made that this denominator in A sub n is always larger than the denominator in B sub n because you're adding 1 to it. So therefore, its reciprocal should be less than. And if A sub n is less than B sub n, then that's case, I'm going to say case i, okay, in accordance with our table here. Because just note that once you determine that inequality, then you determine are we in case i, a sub n is less than or equal to b sub n, or case i i, where a sub n is greater than or equal to b sub n. So it's case i, and I even like to go so far as to say it's the convergent case. Because then it tells me that all I have to do from this point is show that the sum of the b sub n converges. And so now I'll concern myself with the sum of the b sub n. Now before I do this though, let me do make another little side comment on a different sheet of paper. The um, If you don't like this idea of the inequality uh, and the reciprocal reversing the sense of the inequality, I don't like to tell people this, but you can get away with this, not 100% of the time, but the majority of the times, and probably every time for us, and what you can get away with is just picking a number, 4n, and plugging it into each of these, and then determining which way the inequality points. For example, if I let n equal, I don't know, pick a number, any number, I'm just going to say 2 then. Um, we'd have 1 over 2 squared plus 1 compared with 1 over 2 squared. That's 1 fifth compared to 1 fourth, and 1 fifth is um, less than 1 fourth. Okay? So if you prefer to just plug in numbers, it's not the most theoretical way, but it does work. Okay, so this is now I'm saying, so it's, that's not non, it almost looks like non. Okay, so now that we've determined it's case i, the sum of the b sub n is the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of 1 over n squared. You have to tell me what type of series that is. So that's a p series. And you have to tell me what determines its convergence or divergence. The value of p is 2. Okay, and I think I actually neglected to mention this. Um, the p series is on our little table as well. And if you go to the p series, so you don't have to memorize any of these theorems. They're all here in this table. If you go to the p series, if p is greater than 1, then it converges. So use this table to your advantage. And so now we know that the sum of the b sub n converges. Okay, now this is a necessary step. Some people think, okay, I'm all done then. Well, you're really not. You have to say by the theorem, or by the direct comparison test, that the sum of the a sub n, which was the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of 1 over n squared plus 1, that this also converges. See, because it's the two things taken together. If you look at the, the theorem once again for the comparison test here, um, it's the two things taken together that guarantee the convergence of a sub n. The fact that a sub n was less than or equal to b sub n, and we had proven that, that was what we had shown right here, right? That's the ter direct term-by-term -term comparison. And we were able to show that. And the fact that the sum of the b sub n converges. And we were able to show that here. And then those two things taken together, 
by the theorem tells us that our series will also converge. Okay, I think I'm going to stop right there. Um, we'll see if we can um, we'll come back and finish up at least the direct comparison test and then maybe do topic seven separately. We'll see how we're going. So I'll see you when you're ready.